Roll for Crit presents How to Play Spirit Island in five minutes or less, or more. Spirit Island is a cooperative game in which you become a powerful spirit trying to protect your island from evil invaders. Designed by R. Eric Roos and published by Greater Than Games. You'll start the game off with your own special spirit with its own special abilities, a whole bunch of presence tokens, and some unique power cards. Some of your presence tokens will go in specified spots on the board, while the rest remain on your spirit panel board on the indicated spaces. There will also be some friends on the board and some not-so-friends. Your goal is to eliminate all of those not-so-friends before it's too late, but we'll get into the specifics later. The first phase of the game is the spirit phase, which all players proceed with simultaneously. Step one is to choose a growth option. These are listed at the top of your player board. Pick the one you like and follow all of its instructions, either adding presents, gaining energy, reclaiming old cards, or gaining new ones. If adding presents, you'll notice a number and an arrow symbol. This means that you can add presents up to that many spaces away from any other spot on the map where you currently already have a presence token. Every time you add presents to the map, you take the token from the leftmost available spot of either your energy or card track, your choice. If gaining energy, simply take the indicated amount of energy tokens from the supply. The reclaim cards option lets you pick up your entire discard pile back into your hand. And the gain a new card option lets you look through the major or minor power decks for new abilities. After you've carried out your growth action, you gain the amount of energy indicated in the leftmost uncovered spot of your energy track. Finally, you can play as many cards from your hand as your card play track allows. As you can see, placing presence not only lets you affect more sections of the board, it also allows you to get more energy and card plays each turn via your tracks. It's good. Whatever card or cards you decide to play this turn, you need to be able to pay for using energy tokens. The cost is in the upper left hand corner. Lay your choices out in front of you, but don't carry them out until everybody's ready. Now in phase two, players resolve any cards they've played with the red fast power icon. Again, these actions occur simultaneously, but players can decide the order if it becomes significant. Cards also have symbols and information that tell you where and how they can be used, so read up. If you played any powers with a blue slow power icon, be patient, they'll resolve later. Phase three is when the invaders get to wreak their havoc upon the island. First, check your blight card. If all of the blight tokens placed there at the beginning of the game are gone and have been placed on the board instead, then the card flips over, and there will be a negative consequence that must be carried out at this time. Next, check out your fear pile. Throughout the game, players will be generating fear via power cards and or destroying invaders. This represents how scary you are. Each fear generated moves one fear token into your available fear pool. When all of these tokens are in the pool, the top card of the fear deck flips over. That card will take effect right now after the Blighted Island step. These are helpful cards. You want them. Once all the fear has been generated, it moves back to the top of the board to begin another cycle. Next, invaders on the board actually get to do things, as determined by this invader deck. First, check if there's a card in the Ravage space. Whatever land type is indicated on the card there, mountain, sands, wetlands, or jungle, the invaders in that land type will now attack. There are three types of invaders, explorers, towns, and cities. During the ravage phase, each explorer deals one damage, each town two damage, and each city three damage to the land space they're in. If two or more damage is dealt in a land space, then that land receives a blight token. Place a blight token from your blight card onto that space. If there was already a blight token there, then you must also add blight to an adjacent land. Also, if any spirits had presence in that space Blight was added to, then one of each of their presence tokens is destroyed. Look guys, Blight is bad, okay? Now, these little huts are the huts of the Dahan, the island natives, who are on your side. They have two health points apiece. When the invaders ravage the land, they also attack these huts simultaneously, dealing the same damage as mentioned previously. If a Dahan takes two points of damage, they're removed. If they survive, then they get to fight back. They deal two damage each. Explorers have one health point, towns two, and cities three. You generate one fear for destroying a town, and two for destroying a city, but none for destroying an explorer. After ravaging, the invaders will attempt to build. Take a look at the card in the build slot. For any land on the board matching this card that also includes some type of invaders already, they will build either a town or a city in that space. Always add a town unless there are more towns than cities there. Then you add a city. Finally, the invaders will explore. Flip over the top card of the invader deck. 
for every land on the board matching this card that either contains a town or city, or is adjacent to a town, city, or ocean, an explorer gets added to that space. Then, you slide the invader cards over one space each. In this way, the area that was just explored in will on the next round be built in, and the area that was just built in on the next round will be ravaged, so be prepared. Now that the invaders are finally done ruining everything, spirits can activate and resolve their slow power cards, just like they activated their fast power cards earlier on. Power cards can do a lot of neat things, including gathering Dahan or invaders toward a spot in which you have presence, or pushing Dahan or invaders away from a spot in which you have presence. They can also generate fear, deal damage, or defend against damage in a particular area of the board. The card will tell you what type of land it can affect and how far away from a spot with presence you can use it. Some cards require you to be close to your sacred site, which is any spot you have two or more presence on the board. Cards also have element symbols on the left-hand side, which correspond to unique secondary powers printed on your spirit board. If you have the required total symbols available to you on the cards you played during that round, you can activate these powers just like you would a card. If you want more cards in your hands to choose from, you've got to use the gain power option of your growth phase. The way this works is, you draw four cards from the minor or major power deck, choose one, and discard the other three. Major powers are generally better, more expensive to play, and if you take one, you must simultaneously get rid of another existing card from your hand to make room. Once all slow powers have been activated, each player discards their played cards for the round. Damage doesn't carry over, so any Dahan or invaders that took partial damage that turn fully recover. Then you start the cycle over again with your growth phase. When the game starts, you'll need to destroy all of the invaders in order to win. However, if you generate enough fear, you'll eventually reach new terror levels layered within the fear deck. At terror level 2, you'll only need to destroy all the towns and cities to win, and at terror level 3, only the cities. This is much easier, so you'll want that fear. In fact, if you make it through the entire fear deck, you win automatically. Wow! In conclusion, grow your spirits, play power cards, defend against invaders, prevent them from spreading, and strike fear into the hearts of colonists everywhere. That's Spirit Island in a nutshell. Did you get all that? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave some comments down below. Do it!